Hi guys, this is Chris and today we're going to look at Parse, P-A-R-S-E, as you can see from the screen right here. Um, go to Parse.com and you're going to see this page. They describe themselves as a complete mobile app platform and the, the promise of Parse is lets you focus on creating unique and engaging apps. We take care of the rest. So it's kind of vague and, and nothing to do with, you know, if you're a developer you know what Parse means but it has nothing to do with that. But what they do very good is it, they let you focus on building applications, focus on the client side of your application without worrying about the server side. Um, if you're you know, a mobile developer who has you know, come across the problem of building a registration page, you, know, you need to build a submit form, and then that information goes to your server. You need to capture that, save that in the database. There's a lot of hassle, and in most cases you need to build uh, you need to lo you know a certain number of languages, either JavaScript, HTML on the client side, on the server side you need to know Rails, PHP, um, Node.js, I don't know why you want to use Node.js for that, but anyway, um, the point is, you know, this cuts across, um, or, or this new model of, of building applications um, uh, cuts across pretty much everything, but in this case they're focusing on mobile, and um, without further ado, let's, let's start, you know, cracking at that same problem that I just described earlier, building a registration um, component for your mobile applications. And first thing you want to do obviously is go to parse.com, register for an account, and in this case I'm already logged in as you can see from the upper right hand side, um, I'm logged in. And there's this big quick start um, link at the nav, nav bar, uh, go to that and it's going to take you to this page and you need to choose your platform. That's the first step. They have SDKs for iOS, Android, and JavaScript. We're gonna use JavaScript because I'm a, a Windows Phone developer and there's no Windows Phone, phone SDK here. Um, and second step is it, you know, create your first Parse app. Big button, just click on that and it's just gonna ask you for the name of your application. For each account, you can build several applications um, uh, in Parse. And I'm gonna name this Chris Pogi. Uh, but the point is you can build several apps um, for, for your account. Um, I haven't really explored the limitations and how do you pay for this stuff, but um, we're just gonna go ahead. And step three is you can download and install the SDK. In this case, this is Xcode for iOS. You need to uh, choose again JavaScript and this step three is gonna change. It's gonna say, you know, you can download a template for JavaScript, HTML5 and it's gonna come with all the um, references, jQuery, uh, uh, parse um, references on, 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 the, uh, on, on, the, on the HTML. And I've downloaded that, and I'm just gonna show you what that looks like um, in a minute. So if I click on my file right here, uh, index.html, you have a couple of markup. Uh, first you have your, your references, you have jQuery, um, you have parse, and this is done for you, you just need to um, build on top of it, but this is not saying that you need to use this. You can build, the, uh, you can use your own existing project. A um, couple of markups here, and then um, the important part is them describing to you the the hello world for a parse application. And we'll we'll get to this in a bit. Um, first, you need to see that there's a. Uh, I, I put this in earlier. It's not going to work anymore because I deleted that application. But as you can see here, there's a placeholder for your application ID and JavaScript key which you can get from the quick start. Um, uh, again, so as you can see, uh, I have here uh, the application ID and JavaScript key, which I'm showing to you, but um, I'm gonna delete this application after anyway, so no biggie. Uh, and we're, we'll just plunk that right here, and we'll I, I need to purchase that <laughs> application. and. We need to upload this to our web hosting so we can test it out. And we'll explore that source code in a bit. Let me just upload this up on my web hosting index.html. It's gonna go, while it's doing that, it's gonna be quick. Let's go back to the quick start. And as you can see right here, um, this is the hello world. Um, and let's explore this a bit. Um, as you can see from the parse object, you can subclass you can extend to your own class, you can create or um, you can have um, attributes, you can have methods. Um, in this case, you know, we're creating an instance of test object. It could be your own object, game object, score object, um, and, and you know, up to you. And you can save that. Once you do this, it's actually saving to the cloud or, or to the parse um, uh, infrastructure. 
So you don't have to maintain your own database. In this case, it's, it has a foo uh, bar um, typical. So when you save this, you, you can even set up event handlers. You can get uh, an, an event back when, when it's successful or not. Um, but this is it. So you basically have or saving an object. Now, before I run that application, there's a test button right here, which is going to test if we have successfully um, set that up. So as you can see, it says no data yet. Um, what we'll, we'll do is, um, I, I load this up earlier, so I'm just going to reload that and, and set it up and says, okay, you're successful. Um, now when we try that again, it's going to say that you have that information saved on your database. So what does this look like? What does this information look like? There is a dashboard where you, that you can access. So go back to the top. Um, there's a link to the dashboard. Uh, actually, there's a link at the bottom, but I'm used to using going to the top. And it's going to go to our Chris Geek app, and click on Data Browser, and it's going to give us a Data Browser um, view. And as you can see, it has a test object class instantiated, and you have the information foobar and a bunch of other information which is created automatically for you. Now, remember the problem that I mentioned earlier, what if we're creating a login form, you uh, need to set up a registration, need, uh, you know, maintain your own database, it's a lot of work. Um, and Parse is very good at you know, helping you with that. And you know, they, they have this really cool documentation on, on how you can do something similar. Um, and you do that using a user's object. And users is you know, um, extended from the same object class that we saw earlier. But I want you to see this. This is ridiculously easy. If you're setting up a user, um, and it will, it will, I'll show you some, some of the code that I did. Um, you, you set the username, password, email is optional, phone is you know, whatever field you want. And this is the whole sign up process. And it's going to save that to the database. Let's see what that looks like. Um, I have here an application which I built earlier, and it has the same thing. Obviously, I'm going to uh, change this to something else because I created a new application, and that's, uh, that's initialized. And I have a view markup right here. Let me just save that and um, show you what that looks like. Upload this again. Oops. Uh, log in, upload. And once that is done, let's try accessing that from parse login.html. HTML. And as you can see, it's very simple. You can see that. Let me log in. You have a login field, you have a password field, register and sign in. And these buttons are just hooked up to the same so, uh, code that you saw earlier. Um, and let me just go through the code right here. Markup, markup. Um, initialize and this register button jQuery um, hooked up to the click function uh, click um, event and you're just creating the new uh, username password and this is sign up that's it um, that's the register and same thing you have the login which is even more ridiculously easy I'm um, going back to the documentation uh, as you can see logging in is like five six lines of code <laughs> so you log in using the name password and if it's not correct, let's say you don't have that user in there, it's going to give you an error, right? Um, so let's, let's try this out. So if I'm logging in as Chris and Password, I just want to register this. I'm going back to Data Browser. I don't have a user yet. Um, so go, going back to my app. Uh, so if I click on Register, it's going to go back to Parse and save that information. I have an alert uh, saying successfully registered. And going back to the Data Browser, um, let me just reload this and we're gonna get that same user. Obviously, if I keep um, adding new users, it's just gonna add rows in my, uh, my user's object in the dashboard. Now, user is a special object. Um, it's not something you, you, you create yourself. It's, it's provided for you, and you can add attributes to it. So you have, um, I now have a user object uh, with the Chris and a password. Um, so if I try logging in, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's you can see that right there. If I try logging in with an incorrect username and password, it's not going to sign me in, um, obviously. So it's going to go back to the, uh, the row and say, OK, login failed. Um, but if I put in the right username and password, it's just going to say logged in successfully. And I'm just making the div for logout button and the username visible. Now, um, 
if I log out, it's just gonna log out. Um, there's also a corresponding code for um, make sure. Now, you don't want your users to keep logging in if, you're, if they wanna access the um, application. You, you just wanna cache out the login password. And you can do that. Um, there's a, s a source code for that as well. Going back, uh, oops, sorry. Um, going back to the source code. Uh, in here, log in current user. And this is how you get the current users. You can just use that um, for each new request without having to log in. And um, it's using uh, local storage, um, just to show you how that works. So I've logged out and I have a uh, debugger right here. Um, go back to local storage and I, we have this existing information right here. If I sign in, notice on the right that it added a new row. And if I log out, it will delete another row. So it's just using local storage for all that caching purposes. And it's kind of cool. All this functionality, um, all of this residing in how many lines of code? Uh, 882, uh, of course, not including the, the JavaScript references and all that. But normally, you'd build this with the server in mind, right? So you're going to have to maintain a database. Uh, make sure those new users are not clashing with the existing usernames and all whatnot. And they, they even have this cool, um, they're offering this cool functionality where, um, you know, verifying emails. So you could actually send off an email that will allow you to verify um, users. So it's kind of fun. And this is just one of many things that you can do with Parse. Uh, there's a lot of things you can see in the download section, dashboard documentation. Um, and it's really cool. Um, they are now, as you can see, they have 25,000 app, applications on top of Parse, um, and it's quite a lot. And, and it's, it's, it's no wonder Microsoft joined in the bandwagon, so um, they have their own Windows Azure uh, mobile services preview. And um, they, they call this BAAS, which is um, uh, Back End as a Service. Um, you, you can go look that up in Google or Bing. And, and find out more about back end sensor. But it's, it's really you know, nice to see um, service like this. It's really cool. Uh, and I hope you learned a lot in this video. It's, it's kind of lengthy, but um, hopefully that was useful. Thank you.